Hi everyone, today we're going to be uh, continuing with the Miata project that we abandoned after doing a burnout last time. We've got a, a pile of parts, the plan has changed a little bit and we'll go through all uh, the changes that have happened, the parts we've got and how we're going to proceed with the project when we get it in because it has just started raining. Uh, I don't fancy having to push it. It's all the way over there, in the corner still. The bushes have grown around it now. So I wouldn't come near here, it's all nettles and stuff. Stuff. First turn again. This car, man. I can't believe that started up the second I breathed on the key. It's the best car we own. Now that it's in here and we're not going to have to get too wet now, we should go get the parts that we're going to be uh, putting on this. The plan has changed a little. We were going to turbo this for about a thousand pounds. That budget has ballooned a little bit because we decided that we wanted to do a bit of um, a bit of testing on a different turbo platform. Perhaps make some changes to an existing kit to improve it a little bit, make it a bit nicer. We're not going to go too crazy. This is still going to be a cheaper turbo build than any one we normally do. It will not have a low man with on it. But before we get to the exact specifics, we should open these boxes here because they are big and in my way. Uh, we'll start with this, this one. And these, these look like they are sill repair sections. From the MX-5 Restorer, because as we found out last time, this thing is a bit of a shed. We are not particularly competent welders, so we'll see how much we mangle that lovely panel. Which must mean this one contains yeah, two rear arch panels because they are also pretty fit. And we've got one more panel. This is a rear panel for the uh, back of the seal. It's just easier than fabricating it. We only had one that was a real issue. Let's look at the uh, what we've chosen to be the um, power for this car. This is the finest Wuhan Whirly Boy we could buy on the TDO4 flange. I believe there is one major difference with these than real TDO4s. The um, bearing path on the inside is a bit different. But for our purposes, this will do just fine. But we can't just throw this at the car, it won't just fit. We thought about perhaps welding up a manifold, just a dirty one to make it fit. But we wanted to do some real development with this car. We didn't want to make it and then do nothing with it. So in order to actually make that possible, we reached out and got hold of a cast TDO4 manifold. This is a G19 piece, currently sold by Motorsport Electronics. It's got everything you need to bolt it on. It's really nice actually. Very nice on the inside, looks great. Should bolt directly up, allow us to use our fancy turbo. But we were going to uh, put a real ECU on this no matter what. So we have a Speedwino set up here that we wanted to test. You'll see that it's a plug and play board just like any of the other ones on the market. This one is Arduino based. You tune it with Tuner Studio still, has some custom firmware on it. it, comes with a four bar map sensor. This one has a Spartan wideband on board. It's got a bunch of spare inputs as well. It's got flex fuel, knock, sequential ignition if you want it, that's a nice thing to have. Very few plug and play ECUs for the, uh, these cars do that. So that's really nice to see on this one considering it is a budget ECU. We also have yeah, VVT and boost control as well. Not sure how much of this we're going to be using. Comes with an IAT. There is an IAT adapter plugged straight into your AFM connector. That's pretty nice. You don't get that on virtually anything, actually. It's the first time I've seen one of those. Comes with a TPS and an adapter bracket and a tuning cable. Currently, that's all we've got. We're still waiting on some bits before we can actually connect the turbo. We need to oil feed lines and things like that. But Today, we wanted to do something, so we're going to stick this on. The packet it came in does say 
all the jumpers have been preset and it has a base map loaded. So we should be able to plug it in, turn it on and uh, immediately have fun. You'll be pleased to know it's not me that works on your cars. We're going to get this, we're going to get in here quick. <laughs> if it was up to me, I wouldn't put all these back. You only need three of them. <laughs> So we've got to our prize. Looks just the same as every other one. Nothing special. So we'll just undo it. Okay. So now we've got our stock ECU out. Well, I'll take it outside the car so <laughs> poor Jake doesn't have to look so crushed. You can't see him, but I can. <laughs> you wish you could see him. <laughs> so just open this up. Now we can see our no longer useful ECU. Looks old, doesn't it? All right. This one, a lot smaller than the one that came out of it, but there are considerations. We've got to get a map line in, which is just a vacuum hose from the intake manifold. This has an onboard wire band, so we've got to get our, our big cable in from somewhere. So we're just going to be drilling some holes in this case. We've also got our USB cable to get in. All that stuff will not be easily accessible once that's been dropped in. Just drilled the holes. We'll be able to put this in now. And then we've got a hole on each side to pass the cables we need through. Also gotta go get a length of map line for the fit. It's really nice in the case as well. It's exactly the right shape. And we've got this one, which is our wideband connector. Which we're passing through our bigger hole on this side. Should connect directly in. Nice and simple. Go get a length of map line, stick it in there, and we can put the case together. Throw it back in the car. Hardest job really is going to be taking the existing lambda sensor out to put a new one in. So we have to get one of those from stock. So the kit does not come with the sensor. Got a wide band sensor. Shove our map line in. We'll connect it to our map sensor. On the plus side, we should have a um, a big blank in the firewall to pass this cable and the map line through because this car does not have air conditioning, which is a bit unusual for a left-hand drive Miata. Right, that's that. Ready to go right back where we got it from. It's got a base map on it though, so we should be able to do instant burnouts if we wanted to. So, and where it came from, right back in the old. Hang on a minute. This, this matte thing here is dry. I feel like this car is better than it has any right to be. Yep. So now these connectors plug straight back in where they came from. So it's a plug and play ECU. Just as gross as I remember it. Oh, look at that. Big grommet. Perfect. So I'll feed that up. Might as well attach our map line while I'm looking at this cap that's perfect for said map line. This is the standard 1.6 TPS. We change that with every, every time we put a standalone on a 1.6 because that's only an on off switch, it's not a proper not a proper TPS with a linear 0 to 5 volt range, which I don't even know where the sensor is in the 1.6. Oh, it's right there. That one did. 
I am actually shocked. Why is it? Got a brand new wideband sensor for it. This is an LSU 4.9, the one we're using everything. This is just, this is getting silly. How easy this is. Now let's uh, ram it home. Probably hard enough. So now we'll get them in. You can't get them in the wrong way around. Sorted. Throttle position sensor has now changed. That took a while because I was being stubborn and wanted to do it without removing the uh, throttle body. Yeah, turns out you have to remove the throttle body. So, done now though. I've learned my lesson. Time to do something about this lump. The kit came with an adapter to plug into here to attach an IAT. Shove that in. That now connects the IAT. Just crimped the included connector on the end of the pigtail. So now, if, as soon as I plug this in, like so, we now have an IAT. AFM is now pointless and it has a big flapper in it that gets in the way. It's a bit restrictive. So I think I'm just going to take that out. I think that's it. We fixed the intake uh, situation. Put our IAT in. We've run the new Lambda sensor. Swapped our TPS. Plumbed our map line. Plugged our ECU in. It's got a base map on it. So, maybe? Let's give it, let's attempt it. <laughs> Face map. Face map. <laughs> I even looked at it. That's his impressed face. I think it's time. Give it a test. That was the easiest ECU install that we've ever done. Honestly. Speed Wino plugged right in. Base map just worked. Didn't have to wire in our own wideband sensor. Didn't have to do anything really, and it just worked. That ECU install was super easy. Matt's just graced it with its first burnout on the Speedwino. Plugged it right in, immediate burnout, just worked. I also crashed it for the first time. We'll crash it many times since. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Um, keep following uh, our YouTube channel for more videos on this. We'll be doing more soon. We've got to throw that turbo on it. Um, but don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check the shop out for any MX5 parts you feel you need today.